I totally apologize for this late late night video here. I'm super super late. I'm super late tonight with um I should have started with this video this morning, but now it's already 8.30 p.m. But it doesn't actually matter because we want to start with testing these battery cells here. Brand new batch, brand new chemistry. You may have heard about this, but um, I've got them finally here. Actually, they are here for quite a while, but I just haven't had time to test them. So tonight we are starting to test these 10,000 cycle batteries. But first of all, welcome back to the off -grid garage here in the late night show. We have uh, minus 40 amps outside, the hot water system is running and potentially the dishwasher as well. Chinese cracker. I've just put some labels on these batteries here so we can distinguish them. Uh, you may ask yourself why I have my red warning t-shirt on when we do a battery testing. And this is actually because with these four cells I ordered and got them delivered in December last year. I'm not 100% sure what's going on with these battery cells. So, and that's why we want to test them. And then I'll tell you more about this later. Because this video here will take me around three, four days to make. So I'm starting tonight. USB connection. Okay. Okay, I think I've got everything ready for our battery test here and we want to have a very quick look. We want to have a very quick look here at these battery cells. So this is the one from QSO um, which came last year or the year before or something which was actually damaged. Is that? Yeah, that's the damaged one here. It has measured full capacity if I remember correctly. So this is the, 200, uh, the EVE LF 280K variant. Uh, we want to we want to have these ones here next to each other and see what the differences are. So this is the 280K and this is the Hythium... I think they are just Hythium 280 ampere hour prismatic cells called. And actually one of them got damaged here as well in transport. So this is not a manufacturing issue. This got a really bad hit. The box, I don't have the box anymore. This one has a really big dent here in the corner. I've already claimed this with a seller and they're going to replace the cell here. But for now, we're going to test this one as well and see if there's a difference actually, which I doubt it is. But here, dimensions wise, same height, same width and absolutely the same length as well. So there's no difference in the case to the LF280K. But again, it's the same capacity. It's just a different goop inside. They use these square plastic terminals here, while these ones are these oval shaped ones. Barcode on this side, barcode on this side. The, the safety valve looks a bit different. And the material of this black top cover is a bit different. This is actually rough and this is very smooth here. Six millimeter welded stud. And apart from that, the same blue heat shrink. Plaque at the bottom. Interesting also what I just realized, they don't have any negative symbol here around the negative terminal. There's a positive there, but there's no negative on this side. Well, the EVE cell, they've got a negative here and the positive on this side, but still the same colors. Black is positive and this beige negative. And pretty much potentially with the same beer inside. It's almost perfectly flat. There's a bit of a gap there. Check all the other ones. Yeah, this one is a bit Domed is not so straight. This one as well. You can see they have got a bit of a belly. Mm. Supposedly A-grade cells, as always. So first thing we want to do is measure the internal resistance. Oh, you, you can't see sh Okay, let's measure the internal resistance and voltage because all these battery cells are always voltage and internal resistance matched. Which, um, which is total, total nonsense. Measuring the voltage and internal resistance of one of these, one of these cells here is just a snapshot for this moment. Temperature, state of charge, age, 
air pressure, this all has an influence on the internal resistance. So when they measure and match them in China and then send them over here after three months, they won't be matched anymore. The voltage is different, the internal resistance may be different, so, so this is more like a party gag and a sales argument. But it doesn't really mean that these cells are the same. Let's calibrate this to zero. Yep, all right. Okay, so cell number one. What do we have? 3.33 volts and 0.22 milliohms. 0.33 volts, 0.24 milliohms. 3.33 volts and 0.24 millivolts. So cell number four, 3.33 volts and 0.24 millivolts. So these two values are really not important for these battery cells and you can see a major difference of voltage or internal resistance to the other cells. This could be an indication of a damage, a bad cell and I would recommend claiming this with a seller. But in this case everything is good. So I have now connected the first cell, the damaged cell to our battery tester here. Okay, so we start the EB tester software connect to our tester perfect and we want to do a full charge first yeah charging constant voltage 40 amps uh, 3.65 full power 1 amp cut off and start so this is the first step now we want to want to fully charge this battery i've got no idea what state of charge they are in i assume it's around 30 to 50 percent Ah, damn it, it's already late. It may take a few hours to fully charge this battery, but uh, once this is done, we are going to discharge the battery then and take the curve, talk a bit about the curve because we've got so many new viewers here on the channel and explore if we can see anything different to the LF280K, for example. So let's leave this running here for a while until it's fully charged and then we um, do the discharge. So I'll be back soon or whenever this battery is fully charged. Nah, this is not going to work. It is already 10.30 now and the voltage has only risen by like 10 millivolt or so. So um, it takes longer than expected actually. And we have charged uh, 63 ampere hours into this battery now. One and a half hours it is running and it's still going. You can see the flat line here. There's nothing happening. It could take another two or three hours until we are there. Um, I would say we call it for today and see us again tomorrow morning. Well, as always, you have a good night's sleep. See you tomorrow morning. And how are we looking this morning? 80 ampere hours we have charged, discharged, now charged. Yeah, we have charged this into the battery. So that means it was like at 70% um, around 70%. That's pretty high charged. And here we can see the end of the charge curve when we plugged in the battery two, it was two hours and 12 minutes it took. So we stopped at one hour and 30 minutes. I could have waited another 30 minutes to, to start the process then, but who knew? I just start the process again here to charge it to a three point. As soon as it turns off, now we start our task. All right, and it is now discharging, yep. We can see the amps going up to f f 40. Is there 40? Oh, ah, yeah, yeah, 40, 40 amps. Yep, this is our voltage. Dropping down quickly now. So, this should take around six to seven hours now to fully discharge the battery down to 2.5 volts with 40 amps. All right, I'll uh, do some work and we see us um, this late afternoon. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> it's stupid, right? <laughs> Yeah, it has finished. 286.4 ampere hours we have pulled out of cell number one, which is slightly, slightly damaged. Still over capacity, right? Okay, let's have a very brief look at the curve here because I want to start the charge process now and take another curve because we need these both curves for a later video. And the charge process will probably take another seven hours and it is already... Pfft, that will be midnight. I'm probably not going to do that. Anyway, what we can see here is the super typical, is it too dark? Super typical lithium iron phosphate 
discharge curve. We are starting from a very high voltage, 3.6 volts, 3.65 volts here. And then we are coming down very quickly. The flat area of the curve starts approximately here, I would say. And this is already only after using 12 ampere hours of this whole 280 ampere hour capacity. Flat area all the way, all the way through. Here we are reaching 3.25, 3.24, 3.23. And then it starts going towards the cliff and here at 3.1 volts or here 3.0 volts the voltage decreases very fast now and we have used almost the 280 ampere hours the full capacity of the battery so if you stop discharging at 3 volts that is pretty good some people stop at 3.1 i found this a bit too early because if you are a bit over 3.1 volts and you have a high load on your battery it zags it down to 3.1 and then your inverter or your system would shut down in my opinion 3.0 volts is actually a far better point to stop discharging it is more defined so here is exactly 3.0 volts yeah and then afterwards there's another 10 ampere hours it's pretty much the same situation as here at the start so once you reach the flat area of the curve you have used around 10 to 12 ampere hours and this is exactly the same here on the other end as well and in between almost flat curve amazing right so it took us seven hours and nine minutes to uh, fully discharge this battery from 3.65 volts 286.4 ampere hours which is 927 928 watt hours so almost one kilowatt hour out of this one cell amazing okay let me do the charge process and curve as well and I'll talk to you again tomorrow morning when this has finished and we talk about the charge curve for a while. So again, my friends, you have a wonderful night. Have a good night's sleep and see you tomorrow morning. I'll uh, save all this data on my website as well. I link this all under the video here. Yeah, and then um, we have to talk about the red color of my shirt because uh, let us do this charge test first and then I'll talk about what I have found. Okay, I think... I think we are done with the charge process. Yeah, okay, let's see. So we have charged 287.9 ampere hours into the battery and could discharge 286. So it's a 1.5 ampere hour. Of course, these are charging losses. So because of the internal resistance of the battery, there's always a bit of heat loss. Even the battery itself doesn't warm up or something. You cannot feel anything. But still the internal resistance and the current creating a, a power loss inside the battery. And this is what we're seeing here. And of course, the chemical reaction to charge and discharge a battery is not 100% efficient either. But I tell you, these batteries are super efficient. I have made a whole bunch of videos about the efficiency of these batteries. They are all uh, here on my channel. I link some of them down below if I don't forget. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the charge curve here. So we are starting very low with 2.5 volts. And then you can see the voltage is shooting up right up to this point here. And this is after 23 ampere hours, so half an hour of charging with 40 amps. It rises here a bit. So this is 3.25 volts and then we go into the next plateau here at 3.33. This is at around 85 ampere hours of charging and then it stays almost constant until we hit here 3.4 3.4 volts. This is so the end of the flat charging curve and everything afterwards is going into the knee so-called knee. And here we can see the 3.45 volts. This is how far I charge my batteries to. So this is now basically at the beginning of the rising part of the curve. But at this voltage, you can actually see the difference between the cells already. And this is where my balancer kicks in as well. Again, I made a ton of videos about this. They're all here on the channel. And here 3.3.5 volts this is 285 ampere hours out of 287 so this is this is like 99 something percent already charged so why would you charge any higher and then once we hit the 3.65 volts you can see the red curve is coming down the the current is sharp tapering off very quickly so this is at 287 ampere hours 
until here until we hit the 287.9 ampere hour so this is less than one ampere hour so it's definitely not worth absorbing at 3.65 volts anymore there's no capacity gain at all this is just pure for testing purposes now here to get these beautiful graphs right okay boys and girls i would say um, let me do the test with all the other three cells here as well and see what the results are. I'm only going to discharge them, so fully charge and then discharge, measure, measure the discharge capacity as a result. And then we can compare the capacities of these battery cells together. And then I'll tell you about this. Um... All right, I guess um, see you in three days when this whole test is finished and we have the result for all four battery cells. See you then. One eternity later. Oh, guys, welcome back to the Off-Grid Garage Late Night Show, as always. Um, it has been a week since I filmed the last sequence of this video here, because I have tested all these battery cells now with our Chinese cracker here. And um, I did actually two runs. So, and I want to show you the result here from cell number one, 286.4 and the second one was 289 cell number two first one 288 second 287 cell number three 288 289 and cell number four twice 289 so all four battery cells have measured over capacity so i'm really impressed with these battery cells so far it is amazing right yeah what can i say so far i'm really happy with these battery cells 10,000 cycles, they all have the same internal resistance, testing overrated capacity, so everything seems to be fine, right? Well, kind of. So there's only one thing which I haven't shown you with these battery cells. And this is the, exactly, the barcode. If you follow my YouTube channel on the community tab on YouTube, you would have seen the photo I've uploaded yesterday with one of the barcodes of these cells and I asked you for advice. What do you think about this? 100% of the comments I got was these are fake batteries. This is a fake barcode. We cannot scan the barcode. We cannot read it. The Google Power website with the QR code reader says it's incomplete. And the QR code reader app does say the same. It's a fake or faulty, not matching QR code. There are missing numbers, missing letters, everything. And as you can see from the picture here, it, it is far too short, you know? It is really nothing you would expect from a barcode from a lithium iron phosphate cell. So I went on the Hythium website, hythium.com and had a look around and, and I could actually find these battery cells very quickly. They've got them in two variants, one 50 ampere hour and the other one is the 280 ampere hour battery cell. And there are only a few technical parameters they are publishing here. And the interesting part of that was the dimensions actually. So these dimensions mentioned on the website are exactly the dimensions what we have here. But um, well, having a look at the having a look at the product picture they have on their website here, this is a bit of a different heat shrink of wrap, right? It has the Hythium logo and name printed on it. Some Chinese writing, 280 ampere hours, and some more Chinese writing, potentially with some specs on the side. Well, we don't have any of that, right? Any. These are just plank. Nothing to see here. No writing. Nothing. The terminals are square with a round metal terminal. So this matches again what we have here on the workbench. So these are the only specs they are publishing on the website and it says here please refer to the specification sheet for details. Well there is no link, there was no link, I couldn't find anything on the website so I filled out the form and got in contact with them. And a lovely lady, hi Carolyn, got in contact with me the next day and offered some help and assistance with that. Well, I could see that she was from the sales department of Hythium. And we emailed a couple of times back and forward. And after three times, she stopped replying because I think she realized I didn't want to buy anything. I was just after the specification sheets for these battery cells. And I also sent her some photos of these cells here, especially from the barcode and said, can you please verify the authenticity of these battery cells? Are these original Hythium batteries or are they fake ones? 
And since then I haven't heard back from her, unfortunately. So I guess once she found out that I'm doing YouTube videos here, uh, I'm not buying 500 megawatt hours of storage from them. Uh, she probably lost interest on that. Well, I did some more digging on the website and I could actually find the specifications for these battery cells. I linked this PDF down below and I found two things in the specs I want to show you. One of them was the... Um, here, here, here. Okay, it says here, cycle life at room temperature. So 25 degrees, equal or larger 10,000 cycles. So again, they're doing some compressing with uh, 3 kilonewton and they charge to 3.65 volts with 0.5C and then let the battery rest for 30 minutes, discharge with 0.5C. And interestingly, they repeat this test until the battery is down to 70% state of health. Most other batteries, like the EVE battery, they test down to 80% state of health, not 70. So the 10,000 cycles are not really comparable with the 6,000 cycles we get from the EVE 280K battery cell already. So it seems like this is a bit of a marketing trick again, because they are, because they are calculating with a lower state of health for this test, and therefore they are getting more cycles. So here we've got the data sheet of the EVE 280K, LF280K. And here you can see larger, equal or larger 6,000 cycles at 0.5C as well. But, but they are stopping at 80% state of health, not at 70. So if we would continue to 70% state of health, we would get more cycles out of the EVE batteries as well. Presumably 10,000 cycles as well. I don't know exactly. Maybe only 8,000 then, but then these are not super superior over the EVE cells anymore. So this was the first thing I found. Then if we go all the way down where the drawings are. So dimensions, as I said, I have checked them. They totally fit these cells we've got on the workbench here. And funny enough, look at this form of their heat shrink, of their wrap of the cells. See that shape here and here again. You can see that shape and look what we have here on these on these cells look at this this is exactly oh, it's a bit hard to see here this is exactly the the same shape down there and then in an angle to the corner here again there you can see it so all four cells have this shaped wrap or heat shrink around it. So this matches the drawing. While the, while the normal EVE cell, they don't have this weird shape here. See, they've got a seam here where the heat shrink overlaps, but they don't have this weird folding stuff here at the bottom. And I've checked these other kelp cells here as well. They just have these overlapping seam all the way to the top, but they don't have this shaped wrap here at the bottom either. So this is another indication that we actually could have original, non-fake, genuine Hythium battery cells here. And I found something else. If you look at this picture, I zoom in a little bit more, hang on. Look at this drawing here. It has a mark for the positive, but no mark for the negative. Huh? Remember this one? Positive, nothing over here. So. Another indicator that this could be original Hythium battery cells. Okay, so now let's come back to the barcode situation. As you can see here, the barcode is next to the positive terminal. While here on the drawing, the barcode is next to the security valve. So it should be actually somewhere over here, but there's nothing. But when I looked at this picture and looked at my battery cells here, I could actually see can you see that in the camera? There, there you can see it. See this one? It looks like there is something underneath the wrap. There you can see the shape where the barcode used to be. And I found this on all four cells, see? I just need to push down, you don't see it immediately, but if you push down a bit, you can see there was something underneath. There's a bit of a recess where the original barcode was. And this is exactly where the barcode is supposed to be. Absolutely, my friends. 
we are going to remove the top cover now and see what is in this area where the original barcode needs to be, should be. Okay, let's remove this carefully so we can reattach it later. You can see all the glue here holding this top cover down, but in this area there's nothing. So this has been removed or there was never any. Okay, here comes the big moment now. Guys, and we are doing this together. I've never done this before with these cells. I don't know what to expect right underneath this cover now. What will we see? But um, it's, already, uh, it's already quarter past 10 and the video is already long enough. So I think we do this in the second part of the video here. And then we have a look underneath this cover. I'll leave this all sitting here. Okay, as always guys, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, calm down. Let's do it guys, let's do it. All right, here it is. We keep pulling. What will we see? What will we see? Ooh, there's a barcode. I can see a number. There's a barcode, guys. There is an original barcode underneath this cover. I can't believe it. I cannot believe that. It is an original barcode. I'm so fucking excited. Okay, so let's clean this up a bit from the glue so we can scan it. It should be etched into the... Now this is more like a sticker, is it? I don't know. But this barcode looks completely different to the other one. Is it this way around? Yeah, it's this way around. Ah, it doesn't matter. It's, it's both ways. Oh, guys, I'm so excited. Let's scan this barcode and see what it says. Come on, read it. Come on. Okay, let's take a normal QR code reader here and scan this barcode. See if we have any luck. Come on. Come on, scan this bastard. There it is. I got it. I got it. I got the number. Let's copy it and go back in here. Enter manually. See, this is the other. This was the original barcode visible on the cell and it didn't scan or it didn't do anything with it. But now we are deleting this one, pasting this one, going OK. So it says cell unknown, lithium iron phosphate, zero amp per hour, zero watt hours, end of March 22. Um, and that's it. OK, let's go to the global power lithium iron phosphate decoder and paste our code in here decode code seems right length is right unknown so it gives us the same information as the bar as the qr code scanner but no information about these cells interesting so if you want to pause the video here's the number i'll put this in the video description as well if, but we've got an unknown manufacturer which it kind is. I mean, I have never heard about Hythium before that. Before they developed and produced these 10,000 cycle cells. I never heard of this manufacturer before. Never ever. That could be the reason why this QR code is still unknown. Interesting. The big question now here is, why do we have two QR codes on these battery cells? And the original barcode seems to be hidden under the top cover. Why would you do that? And using this barcode here, which is not readable or invalid with all our known barcode readers. But this one reads. So, guys, this is all. I don't know what to say. Okay, I would say let's... Um, I'll try to get back to Hythium in China and see what they are saying about these two barcodes. Why that is, what the other unknown invalid barcode is for, and why is the other one hidden. But from all the other features we have seen in this in this specification sheet from them, it seems like these are the Hythium 10,000 cycle battery cells. So they are not fake. I think I need another one of these. Jeez, what an exciting evening. Okay, guys, I was I was not expecting an original genuine barcode under the top cover. I was really thinking about 
something was etched away, scratched away, or maybe the original barcode with a B lasered in. But this seems to be the original barcode, right? So I, I, I'm really not sure how to feel about all this now. This is so unexpected. So the, the question now is, do I still need this red warning t-shirt or is it all good? At the moment, I've got no idea how to... Uh, I mean, what is going on here? I guess we end the video here. I'll try again to contact Hythium and see what they are saying about this stuff. And I'm very keen to read your comments under this video here. What do you think what's going on here? So, as always guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks, it has started raining. Thanks for all your amazing support here on the channel. Especially thank you for your generous donations and t-shirts. And until the next video guys, you stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. Ah, wait, wait, wait. I haven't told you where I have ordered these battery cells from. I have ordered these battery cells from QSO. Who would have thought?